All right. I'm still Jeff Falk, co-founder and CEO of Admetsis, where we've created the first artificial pancreas system for hospital care. So in this audience, I presume the diabetes epidemic really needs no introduction, uh, but one thing that goes a little bit less uh, discussed in, in public discourse is just how transformative the diabetes epidemic has been to hospital care. Today, over 40% of all patients admitted to hospital and over 80% of patients in critical care environments are at diabetic risk. Those $245 billion spent annually in the U.S. on diabetes care, 43% of those expenditures are incurred in hospital. The medical impact of this is equally profound. Uh, in patients who have their uh, blood glucose is well controlled and, and hypoglycemia prevented, we see a 34% overall reduction in in-hospital mortality. Think about that for a moment. That's one patient in every three who die in hospital could be saved by this sort of uh, treatment. Uh, commensurate reductions in, in comorbidities as well uh, across a, a host of different complications ranging from polyneuropathy and the need for transfusions uh, to post-secondary infections. Uh, and most to the point today in, in hospital care, uh, the length of stay, reduction of 1.8 days on average with a commensurate uh, reduction in cost, eight to $10,000 per patient. So how are we addressing this? Uh, unfortunately, it's the same way we have been for nearly 30 years now. A uh, nurse manually takes a blood sample from a patient, reads a complicated order sheet, and toggles an insulin drip. Uh, this is incredibly imprecise. It's designed to be tractable for a nurse. It's not designed to be precise from the standpoint of patient care. And moreover, it's really laborious. Uh, this takes time, and quite frankly, it doesn't scale. We don't have enough critical care nurses in the world to face down this particular epidemic. And that's what's led us to the technology that we've developed. This is the IBIS. Uh, this is our smart pancreas technology. It effectively functions as a metabolic autopilot. Attaches to an existing patient's IV line, draws a small blood sample back every few minutes, measures the glucose uh, concentration electrochemically, and then reinfuses that blood to the patient so it's biologically closed and there's no blood loss. From this, using only patient body weight as a data input, uh, it models the patient's metabolism in real time and then infuses insulin to lower blood glucose, and dextrose to raise and support it. So we've done three FDA-approved clinical trials to date uh, on over 50 patients with 97% control and euglycemic range, that's normal human blood sugar, and most critically, 100% prevention of, of potentially deadly hypoglycemia. This is what this looks like from the standpoint of patient data. You see there at the onset of treatment, not only elevated glucoses that are normalized in about two and a half hours, uh, but variability in those glucoses across the entire trial populations that's progressively quashed as time goes on. This is a key uniformity measure, and it's this particular predictability that allows us to perfectly align the business model with the needs of hospitals from the standpoint of finances. So we don't sell uh, expensive capital equipment to hospitals. Rather, rather, we offer hospitals a dependable per patient day cost of diabetes care through consumables. Uh, in the United States and Europe combined, uh, we see a total addressable market in our initial launch sub-segments of about 200,000 devices, and that represents consumable sales repeating of about $13 billion annually. So where are we today? Well, uh, we have uh, accelerated review with FDA. We have patents that have been approved both in the United States and in Europe. We'll have first product off of the line, final product uh, in late September, early October this year. Uh, we are a class 2B device in Europe. Uh, we'll be approved, uh, hopefully, the beginning of, uh, of 2016 uh, for a pilot commercial launch in Northern Europe in the early part of 2016. Final data in front of FDA uh, later in the year uh, with a commercial launch anticipated in the United States uh, late 2016, maybe early 2017. So here's a quick look at the team. It's myself. Uh, I'm a hardware software engineer and adaptive systems by background. Uh, our chief scientist, uh, who's also my father, uh, is an uh, endocrinologist and nuclear medicine expert of uh, about 25 years. Uh, and uh, my chief operating officer up here in the front, Glenn Robertelli, is uh, an industry expert. Uh, he's a veteran of a number of Johnson & Johnson companies, has brought a number of medical products and, and other uh, related technologies to market. So I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts. So first of all, this is not a speculative product. It's a direct answer to a demonstrated market demand and a pressing medical need. Uh, this is, we have first mover advantage in a market that's doubled in the last 10 years and promises to double again in the next 10 to 12. 
Uh, and finally, if we simultaneously want to improve uh, patient outcomes and improve healthcare economics, this is precisely the sort of technology that we need. Uh, we need to take the sort of things that we've been extremely successful with in other technological fields into the places where uh, our, our health and lives uh, most depend on it. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions you guys have. I have a question. At the outset, you, you referred to this as an artificial pancreas, but then it sounded a little more like a continuous glucose monitor. Um, does it treat the... So as I understand, it draws blood, does some kind of analysis, and gives the blood back to the patient. Is that right? Uh, it gives the blood back to the patient. It also automatically medicates the patient, uses so, insulin to okay. lower blood glucose and glucose to raise and support. Okay, so that was my question. Right, it's, it's a fully closed loop treat. system. Okay. And there are no glucose monitoring systems that do anything like that? None. So uh, about two years ago, FDA established a priority review subdivision for artificial pancreas submissions. To the best of our knowledge, we are the only hospital-focused device that's participating in that initiative. So the customers then would be hospitals? Correct. Um, how are you going to uh, capture this zillion-dollar market? <laughs> I, I understand that you have yeah. uh, a, a great technology here. Certainly. So uh, sales in the United States will be mostly through the network level. So, so looking at hospital networks, the tenants in the HCAs of the world, but also smaller hospital networks. So uh, Florida Hospital, MedStar, uh, partners up in this area of the country. Uh, those folks do consolidated purchasing for a number of institutions. So developing those sales relationships before the product is actually approved in the United States are going to be key. Uh, that's something that we're working on toward the end of this year. What's the nature of the disposable in this case? Yeah, the disposables are the insulin and glucose syringes pre-filled and the sensor cartridge. And I should note that each one of these carries a proprietarily encrypted EEPROM chip that uniquely identifies that consumable to the host. So only the host control, the durable good, the system itself, uh, is able to, to use those devices and vice versa. It prevents any counterfeits, but it also acts as a key uh, medication delivery error prevention system. Uh, so this uh, the system will only uh, infuse the medication that uh, that's prescribed, that's, that's uh, indicated for, for use by that particular device. So this is a safety indicator as well. Um, do you have competitors and um, do you have any IP protection? Uh, so we do have IP protection. We have approved patents, uh, two families of patents approved both in the United States and in Europe, one on the system and then one on the consumables. And as far as competitors go, there's no direct competitor, as I mentioned. We're the only closed-loop device uh, for blood glucose control that's targeting the hospital environment specifically. Individual components of the system, uh, so a standalone monitor or a standalone dosing algorithm that's, uh, that's basically implemented as a software program, those things exist out there, but uh, they're only one piece. Uh, and really, if you want to simultaneously, as I said, improve healthcare outcome, outcomes and the healthcare economics, you have to look both at the precision, and that means closed loop treatment, uh, and at the labor characteristics, and that means automation. All right, thank you, Jeff. That is all the time we have for questions. So let's give one everybody. more round of applause.